Hi everybody, my name is Cho Cho Ray Xie, uh, from UC Davis. So today I'm going to present uh, our recent work on applying gradient boosting decision tree uh, for extreme classification. This is joint work with uh, CC, Indigit Dillon, Kersey, and uh, DeRoof. So uh, in extreme classification, we already seen a lot of uh, talk in this workshop. So uh, here we uh, define some notations for my talk. So we assume the X, uh, we are given training data XI and YI. XI is a, a D-dimensional feature vector, and YI is a L-dimensional uh, label vector. So the label vector can be a zero, one L-dimensional vector. So our goal is to uh, learn the best function f of x such that f of xi approximately equal to yi for each training data. So in the uh, extreme classification setting, uh, we have millions of features, samples, and labels. So in those cases, uh, uh, this problem is very challenging because, uh, for example, in the traditional one versus all or one versus one classification, you have learned order L com, uh, classifiers in order to do the prediction. So the model, uh, if you use a linear classifier, then the prediction time is order L times D. L is number of label, D is the feature dimension. And the model size will also be LD, which is very large. So this work, we try to improve the prediction time and model size for extreme classification. And our and we choose the decision tree approach as our base learner. And the reason is this, because uh, in a decision tree, um, each node, you try to split the data into left-hand side or right-hand side. So, and by looking at one variable, one feature, one feature. So each node, you just need a constant time to split the data to decide whether you want to go left or go right. And uh, in and in the end, you are if you build at least decision tree, uh, what's the prediction time? So if a train if a testing data, if we get a testing data, then you just go through each node in the tree uh, to the leaf. So if the tree height is p, the prediction time is order p, uh, and it's ind independent to dimensionality and feature space, uh, and label space. So we also have small model size in the tree because for each node, you only need to store uh, which variable you want to look at and uh, which value you want to do the switch holding. So each node only store one integer and one double, one floating point. Uh, totally, you only need order two to the power of p uh, memory requirement in the prediction phase. So this is why we want to apply the tree to extreme classification. Okay, so um, so we choose decision tree to be our best learner. And uh, actually, Manik also did this before. So fast XML is uh, another decision based decision tree based extreme classification algorithm. And uh, in fast XML, they choose to use the random forest approach, which means you try to learn uh, maybe 100 decision trees independently, and then average the result to give the prediction. So in this case, they will need a lot of trees because each tree is built independently and uh, uh, yeah, the models are redundant in this case. So we try to apply a gradient boosting decision tree algorithm to solve this problem. We try to use this to reduce the number of trees in the algorithm. So let's give uh, some background about gradient boosting decision tree. Uh, in this algorithm, you try to learn an ensemble of trees. So you try to, we define a small f to be the uh, base learner. Each one is a decision tree. And capital F is the combination of uh, f1 plus f2 to fm. So our, our goal is to obtain the ensemble tree f, capital F, by minimizing the loss on defined on training data. So to do this, uh, gradient GBDT uh, each iteration, uh, you first compute the current gradient of the each training data. So uh, this is a one variable function, uh, one variable loss function for a training data. You compute the gradient, uh, and then 
you try to learn the decision tree to fit the gradient. So GM, if you have n training data, then GM is a n-dimensional vector, and you try to learn the tree to fit this gradient. And then uh, you add the tree to the current model by a step size gamma. So this is the GBDT algorithm, and uh, it, it's something like gradient descent. Each time you update your model by a gradient direction, but you use a tree to fit this gradient. So uh, the picture is like this. Initially, you build a tree to, uh, initially you don't have any model, so you just build a tree to fit the label parameter, label vectors, Y. And next iteration, you compute the grad current gradient based on the first tree. And then you build a second tree to fit the gradient. And then you update your model uh, and then build another tree. So you build a tree incrementally. Each one try to capture more information uh, which is not captured in the previous one. So it's uh, intuitively because you are doing this sequential process, it will be better than the a random forest approach. So we try to apply this GBDT algorithm to the extreme classification and uh, uh, what's the difficulty? So uh, we, you, we, in this work, we just use a simple square loss. Uh, so we try to minimize the uh, square loss of yi, which is the observed label, minus your prediction of the tree. So um, the, the problem is the L is very large, number of label is very large, so Y is a very large one million dimensional vector. In this case, you have slow training prediction time and huge model size and the unbalanced decision tree, as I will mention in the following. So in the first two challenges, slow uh, training and prediction time and large model size is because in the, because your tree want to output the label vector for training data. So each output of the leaf node should be a L dimensional vector. Uh, so if each one you store a L dimensional vector, uh, then uh, you have prediction times order L because after you go into the leaf, you need to go through this L dimensional vector. And the model size is order L times number of nodes, in a uh, number of leaves in a tree, which is very large. And the, the even worse is in a training time, uh, the decision tree is untrainable in this case. Because as I mentioned before, after, uh, after training the first tree, you have to compute the gradient. And even if the label, the observed label yi is the sparse vector, but the gradient will always be the dense vector. So after training the first tree, the gradient, which is a residual in a square case, will be a dense L-dimensional vector for each training data. This case, you have you cannot uh, sparsify it, and uh, uh, the training will be order L times n, and the model you need to store is also order L times n, and it's one million by one million in Manix data set, so you cannot do this. So the our solution is very simple. We try to enforce the intuition is that because the goal is to predict the top K labels for each data. We are do not going to say, uh, it, for each data it will only uh, be belong to maybe 10 or 100 labels. It will not belong to 1 million labels. So for each leaf, we only try to, we will try to enforce the sparsity of the output. So how to do this? It's very simple. You just minimize the square loss plus the, with the uh, zero known constraint. So we, want to have k non-zero elements, and uh, this, this problem have a closed form solution. Uh, very, it's a very simple problem. And uh, the better thing is we develop an efficient algorithm for computing the best split in each node. So uh, the, algorithm, the training algorithm will also be very fast. The complexity is proportional to k instead of l. And another problem is the unbalanced decision tree because the feature is sparse. So every time when you look at one feature, you can only, only a small portion of the sample go to left and a large portion of the sample go to right. Now, so to handle this, we first learn the embedding for, we, we learn embedding for the feature for each data and then use this embedding, low, low, low rank embedding to build a decision tree. 
So it's a two-step algorithm. We use LE and L algorithm to learn the feature embedding. So in the end, it's uh, our model. You have a given data X, you go to each tree, uh, you traverse the tree, each one you just look at one variable, you go left or go right, and in the end you have a k-dimensional ve sparse, ve uh, l-dimensional vector, but it's k-sparse, and you combine all these results to get a prediction. So the training time, uh, if you don't use any projection, then the training time, then the model size and prediction time are independent to L and N and D. If you use the projections, then uh, you will slightly increase the prediction time and model size. So let, let's go to the experiment. We try the uh, data sets, multi-level data sets, and uh, be, uh, so fast N XNL is a random forest approach, so uh, in, so we should compare with LAN. And you can see our algorithm GBML give us similar prediction accuracy at top one. And uh, we have much smaller uh, model size and a much smaller prediction time. And this is the comparing with other algorithms. So the, this is the model size versus prediction at one. You can see the blue lines, our algorithm, so we can get better accuracy using smaller model size, and we can be get better accuracy using less predi uh, prediction time. So in conclusion, uh, we developed a modified gradient boosted tree for extreme classification, and uh, in the future we want to further improve the training time and try other, maybe we can try other loss function because currently we just use square loss. And then we also, uh, so as I mentioned in the first step, we use LE and L to get the low dimensional feature embedding. So for less step, we may use other algorithm to learn better embedding uh, for the GBDT algorithm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe.